terms, and that's often used against them. So I think we can assume that social engineering will work. And what I wonder is, can we actually train our victims in the ways of social engineering? Will that really decrease the likelihood of them getting scammed? So far, it doesn't look promising, but maybe we haven't been going at it the right way. So those of you who actually perform security awareness training within organizations, I wonder if you can create an effective and engaging program that teaches about things like that, and then measure through pen testing whether or not it's been successful. I wonder, is this successful or not? I think it can be successful. So far, we've been failing at it. So let's assume that we're going to fail and that the outsider can very easily become the insider. What does that mean to us? Well, I think that means that when we look at our security architecture, we need to start thinking less about external barriers, if they're going to fail anyway, and start focusing a bit more on what goes on inside the organization, because an outsider can easily become the insider. And that means putting more focus on internal segmentation of resources and internal monitoring of traffic that goes, of traffic that goes on within and outside of your environment, or other outbound traffic, and focusing on giving your users less, as, as little privileges as they need, not because you don't trust them, but because you know they can easily be scammed and you're trying to protect them. So that's probably what I want you to, to leave this, this session with, thinking about an outsider in a similar way as the insider and, and re-architecting your environment accordingly. And yeah, the concrete examples that I showed you. If you want these slides, I'm not sure if you're going to get them as part of the conference. Probably you will, but if you want a copy, send me an email. I'm happy to share these stories with you. And everything that I've been discussing is, has been based on publicly available information. So I have the URLs to, to all of this to show that this really happened. It's not just just us theorizing about what could have happened in the environment. So any, any questions about this or any observations? Have you seen other techniques that I maybe should have mentioned that have been really effective in the real rather than theoretical scenarios? Yes? I just had an observation that uh, criminals and pen testers put a lot of thought into social engineering. Maybe we should try that with our user education so that we have to play Yeah, so, so you're saying uh, criminals and, and attackers put a lot of effort into social engineering because it works. So put more effort into training your people to deal with such attacks. Because yes, if they have been taught to expect certain things, that they can second guess things. And also make it OK for them to ask for help. Because in many cases, people feel um, embarrassed that they have seen this, that they fell victim to this. But if we tell them that it's OK, everybody falls victim to this, tell us as soon as this starts happening to you, we can help you catch it early on. Yes? One question I would ask is, what percentage of users do you need to be effectively following cybersecurity awareness training before it can be considered effective? Mm. If you look at people who still aren't buckling their seatbelts, um, it just seems to me that it is hopeless and that if, if, you, if you're using uh, cybersecurity awareness training, and, and, and what you need to do is companies like Wombat, and I'm not associated with them, and others, that are doing the fake social engineering, the fake phishing attacks, so that you can measure the effect mm -hmm. of your cybersecurity awareness training. You can hold employees accountable for not following the kinds of things you're supposed to do. You can increase your training for particular mm -hmm. groups. To me, that's an essential part. Yeah, so, so, so what Andy is emphasizing is the fact that you can really put some metrics behind um, security awareness training and how effective or ineffective it is. Because you can have a, an engaging social engineering um, training session and then hire somebody or do it internally to have your users social engineered by a pen tester and see if this is effective. Was their success rate less or more than, uh, when you conduct, than before the training, right? And at the same time, see if it's effective. And if it's not effective, you know what? Maybe this is bound to fail and, and then create your security architecture accordingly. Let me add one other thing for folks. That I think the best example manifested by government, that government is beginning to be convinced that, that cybersecurity awareness training is a failure, is the National Strategy on Secure Online Transactions. That pending initiative, the National Strategy on Secure Online Transactions, is trying to raise the bar on the processes and the technology that are used so that you don't need so much cybersecurity awareness training. Yeah, yeah, because assume that so social engineering will succeed. Users, some users might be trained, some just don't care or are untrainable, and, and yeah, don't put too many, too much of your trust into the user. Yeah, I think I think that's a great takeaway. Yes. You're talking about corporate users. I mean, all the gazillions of people who are kids who are working in the cities, 
who live in other countries, who live in developing economies, you know, every one of those is an attack vector. Yeah, yeah, I think Patrick is, is, is mentioning, is bringing up the fact that uh, the scope that we need to look at goes beyond just the corporate enterprise, but also the people with whom employees interact at home and their kids and who knows what they're installing on the computers. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge problem. That's why, again, I agree with Andy. Try this. See if it works. Maybe it will, but don't trust in it working. Invest in repeatable, technological, measurable controls that can... Um, that can really protect information without trusting the user too much. Well, I think we're running out of time. Thank you very much for your attention. If you could please take a few extra seconds to, to give some feedback to me and to the organizers about this session, that would be most appreciated. And I'm also going to be around if you have any thoughts or, or questions. So thank you, guys.